Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. We continue to explore the command line environment and the different things that you can do in it. In previous videos, we've looked at a number of different commands that you could use. Uh, in this video, we're not going to introduce any new commands. Instead, we are going to look at how you can uh, change the way that things are input and output from uh, those commands, we refer to as IO redirection. So we'll bring up our terminal and remember we in a previous video we pulled down this big log file. Uh, in the last video we downloaded the Google uh, homepage to get this index.html and I want to use this log file as an example. So we saw last time how we could use a command like tail to see the last 10 lines of something. And so this prints out the last 10 lines, but what if I wanted to know what step we were on in the last 10 lines uh, or at the end of this? So this only says that the step ended and I could possibly make it longer and see, hmm, nope, I still don't get to see what step number I'm on. I could also do this. Okay, and then you can see the numbers, but unfortunately I don't get quickly to the end. Uh, it's going to take a while to print out. I'd kind of like to combine those two. and. Uh, one of the ways that I can do this is with IO redirection. So what I want to do is I want to take that grep and instead of having it print out everything, which is what it's doing right now, I want to send the data that would have been printed, the stuff that's, that's on the screen here, I want to send that to a different command. In this case I want to send it to the command of tail. And the way we do this is with a pipe. Uh, it's the vertical bar on most keyboards. It is on the key above the enter key. Um, you have to hold down shift to get to it. And what that pipe does is it takes the output of whatever is before the pipe and turns it into the input for whatever is after the pipe. And so in this case, we can say pipe it to tail. Now it still has to run through the entire log file. Okay. That wasn't quite enough. There we go. 20 lines is sufficient in this case to see that this ended on step 15,001. Okay, so that was preferable to having to go through the entire uh, grep. Um, what if I actually wanted to be able to look at various things. So for example, there are a number of lines in the log that start with critical. Now I can just print them all out, uh, which is you know, maybe somewhat useful to me depending upon what I'm doing, but maybe I want to be able to go through these you know, one page at a time and to be able to search for things in it. Well in that case I could take the output of this and I need to pipe it to a program that will let me run back and forth through the text. And of course the program that does that best is less. And so I can take the output of grep and pipe it into less and here we go. So I can go up and I can or I can go page down, page up. I could search for one, two, three, four inside of this. So there's one there and I hit in and there's another set and another set and another set. Okay, so you can see here how I am now inside of the less program, but what I am doing a less on is the output of this grep. And that's basically what the, the pipe does for you. And you can stick multiple things together uh, from this. Um, an example of that, we saw that the PS command shows you what's running. And when you give it the hyphen EF, it gives you a long list. What if I only want to know the things that I am running? So I want to know the things that are being run by student. Well, then I could pipe to a grep for student. Okay, and that just printed it all out for me, uh, but it's still rather long. 
but in this case it's not that bad and I can easily scroll through it but maybe it had been longer or something and I also want that output to go into less and we can do that you can see how that's done here it runs PSEF instead of printing the output it sends that output to the grep command which then only gives us back lines that have student in it and then that goes to the command less and now we have the ability to scroll down and scroll up through here and we can do searches for things whatever it is that that we want to do okay. so pipe is remarkably handy and it really makes the command line environment uh, far more powerful there are other IO redirection commands which allow you to send things into files or have things come back out from files um, so let's look at an example of this. Um, how about we do this ps ef, but instead of printing it to screen, I want this to go into a file because I'm intending to edit it or work on it or whatever. Uh, to do that, I can use a greater than symbol, and you can picture this as like a little arrow that points to the right. So it says, take stuff from PSEF and send it into, how about, we'll call it processes.txt. Notice that when I run that, it doesn't print anything for me. Okay. But if we look, there's now a processes.txt in here and I can do less on it and see what is inside of there. Okay. So the greater than will send something to the output. This is really helpful if you need to go through something slowly or if you need to process something. So for example, let's do that grep for critical in log and send it to uh, Let's call it critmatch.txt. Now, if we were to look in that, we have a file here, and every one of these, the first number should be equal to the second number. Um, and I could go through by hand and do this, but now that it's down to just these lines, it would be easier to write a program that could go through this and just pull out the two numbers and make sure that they are equal to one another. Um, so that's one usage. Now, when you use just the greater than, it turns out that whatever you do, you wind up overwriting the file that's there. So, for example, if I change it so it's just a regular PS, you should recall that PS gives you a very short output. And now, if I look at processes, it's that short output. The long stuff is no longer there. Uh, because when you... When you use the single greater than it overwrites it what if you wanted to add the stuff onto the end well you simply put two greater thans okay this does an append to the end of it and so for example if i uh, this previous line i redid the file and made it long and now what i want to do is do the short version of ps and add it on to the end of that file and if we look at it now, we have all of the long version, if I page down through here. But you can see when we get to the very end, this is the output from the short version, right down here. Okay, so um, the greater than greater than allows you to, to output in that way. While we don't necessarily have significant need for it right now, um, there will be need while you're programming to have the direct the input redirection going in the opposite so what's a, we can do a less than um, that's an example of this let's grep for Google in and I am going to send as the input that file now in this case with the way that grep works, I didn't have to put the less than. I could have simply done this and it would have looked inside of index.html. But what this formally says is that grep is just going to take work on standard input and the standard input is not going to come from the keyboard. It's going to come from this file. And the reason this is going to be helpful in programming 
is that a lot of times when you write programs, you have to check whether or not they are correct. Generally, they won't be the first time. And so what you need to do is you need to write a file that has all of the input that you want to type in. And then you're going to put that file in there so that when you run your program like this, it will uh, take that input and you don't have to retype it because sometimes it can be a pain to type the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and so this type of, of usage can prevent you from having to do that. So that gives you a basic overview of how we can do IO redirection and you can combine this with any of the commands that either uh, printed things out to the screen or that work with things from standard input. Uh, make them so that they you can put stuff together and uh, basically get more power out of the command line. Uh, that's it for this video. When we come back next time, we'll look at the text editor that we're going to use from the command line.